Hey everyone, Kathy Wood has been absolutely loading up on this one innovative growth stock, which has a lot of investors asking if they should be loading up on it too. So I'll take a look at what this company is, its characteristics and the unique business model. And then I'll finally come up with the conclusion whether investors should go ahead and buy this innovative growth stocks. Now, I often say because one popular investment manager is buying a stock doesn't mean you should buy it too. You should look at the stock on your own and determine if that stock makes a good investment or not. Not just because a popular investment manager is making the purchase. Although it's not surprising that when you notice a popular investment manager purchasing the stock, that can put it on your radar as a company that is worth maybe looking into. So that's totally fine. And that's what we're doing in this video here. So let's jump right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, the innovative growth stock that we're talking about in this video is Roblox. And I've highlighted here the combined ARK Invest ETF purchases of Roblox stock in recent days and weeks you can see april 2nd three purchases of roblox stock totaling over 17,000 shares more purchases on april 1st three different segments of purchases totaling close to 25,000 shares on april 1st more buys on march 28 27 26 and you get the point here hundreds of thousands of shares of roblox stock purchased by kathy wood's arc invest etf portfolio but just because Kathy Wood is buying it doesn't mean you should buy it too. Let's take a look at this company more closely to determine if it makes a good investment. So one of the unique characteristics of Roblox is the business model. And you've really got to understand the business model before you make any decision on Roblox stock. The company is a metaverse platform, brings together players worldwide to play in games and engage in activities on the metaverse platform joining roblox is free you can join roblox play the games and not ever spend a single penny on the platform however roblox does offer currencies for sale they are called robux and you can use these robux to buy premium experiences that are not available to the free players so players Join the platform, you can join for free. But then if you want to experience some of the premium items, the premium games, you got to buy Robux. And when you purchase Robux, this is how Roblox accounts for the purchase. So a user spends $30 on purchasing Robux and they exchange it for 3,000 Robux. On average, the user spends Robux within three days on the platform. But the company doesn't recognize this until over 28 months. You can see here the rest $28 of that $30 purchase is spread out over 28 months. So a player might deposit $30 on the Roblox platform to buy Robux. But then Roblox spreads out that those purchases, those dollars over 28 months. So it takes time for those $30 to turn into revenue at roblox now if you've got kids that have roblox and if you've got kids that have used robux you know that it doesn't take them 28 months to go through 28 dollars in robux typically whenever my kids get robux usually for a special occasion like a birthday or christmas it's gone within a day or two and i wouldn't be surprised if it's a similar situation with your children as well so this is a unique way that Roblox characterizes or recognizes revenue on the platform that makes its revenue look lower than it actually is. It makes its revenue look lower than it actually is because of the way it spreads out these purchases over 28 months. So that's a big thing to understand with Roblox and the way it recognizes revenue. Another big thing to understand with Roblox is the way it outsources the games and experiences and items on the platform. This is one thing I really like about the business model. So Roblox doesn't create the games and experiences and items on the platform all by itself. It outsources this. It tells developers, hey, 
create games for this platform and will pay you if they're successful. So developers are incentivized to create games for the Roblox platform that gets people to spend money on the Roblox platform. And developers only get paid if they make things that people spend money on. So it's essentially a zero risk way for Roblox to generate experiences on the platform, right? If a developer creates 10 games and only one of them ends up making money, they're only gonna make money from that one creation and only a fraction of the revenue that it generates. So essentially, Roblox outsourcing lowers the risk in the business. And I like when businesses can lower risk while at the same time creating revenue generating opportunities, which is what revenue does, which is what Roblox does, I should say, with this business model outsourcing. It's an asset light way for Roblox to create experiences, create innovations on the platform that keeps people coming back because of its large user base developers are incentivized to create games. The opportunity is big. I'm gonna share with you in just a little bit how many millions of users Roblox has, and those millions of users are what create the developers, that create the demand for developers, for them willing to take a chance to spend their time and energy and effort to create these games on the platform because there's a large opportunity for the developers so they're willing to spend their time to create for the platform so i mentioned earlier that revenue is not the most informative way to look at roblox's business bookings is the more informative metric to look at because bookings accounts for all of that money that gets deposited on the platform right so if someone deposits 30 dollars, that immediately counts as bookings right away 30 dollars. so that is more informative for the investor to look at how much money is coming on Roblox, right? Because once money comes in, it's not going out, right? People are not returning their Robux or people are not uh, putting in $50 and then asking for $25 back, right? Once $50 goes into the Roblox platform, it's very likely that all $50 are going to be spent on Roblox. So eventually these bookings turn into revenue and as I mentioned earlier with my case, with my children, this usually happens very quickly. So looking at bookings, you can notice here that Roblox has done very, very well. Now, back in 2021 and early 2022, I was concerned with Roblox because of the economic reopening. This is a company that benefited tremendously from the lockdowns during COVID. People staying home, kids staying home more often, we're going on the Roblox platform more frequently, spending more money there. And I was concerned how the business would evolve after economies reopen. And you'll notice here in the first quarter of 2022, in the second quarter of 2022, there was a decrease, right? Minus 3% and minus 4% in bookings in those two quarters, much lower than I was expecting. I was expecting a bigger drop off in terms of bookings when economies reopen. But it was relatively small and I was surprised. And then following that, Roblox has returned to growth 10%, 17%, 23%, 22%, 20%, 25%. So four straight quarters of above 20% increase in bookings on the Roblox platform. And as we discussed, this eventually turns into revenue. Additionally, cash flow from operations is also a better, more informative metric to consider with Roblox than profitability because cash flow from operations accounts for the bookings, the cash that's coming into the business, and doesn't spread out those cash deposits over 28 months like revenue does. And so when you're spreading out that revenue over 28 months, it makes the profitability on the bottom line look much worse than it's actually in going on into the business, right? A more informative look is the cash flow. And you'll notice cash flow from operations, strong, right? We had that decrease because of economic reopening. But since then, rising up again, fourth quarter of 2023, 143 million in cash flow from operations. Fourth quarter of 2022 was 119 million in cash flow from operations. So in each quarter of 2023, the cash flow from operations was larger than its relative quarter in 2022. So not only are they strongly positive in cash flow from operations, 
but they are increasing the cash flow from operations year over year. And lastly, the final metric I want to show you from Roblox is the increases in average daily active users. You'll notice here 71.5 million average daily active users. That's up 22% and four straight quarters of north of 20% increase in average daily active users, way more than they had during lockdown stages. Again, this was a metric I thought was going to crash following the economic reopening, but it didn't. The growth rate slowed down, right? During 2020, they were growing at you know 90%, 100%, right? So they're not growing at that rate. They're growing at roughly 20%, you could say, which is an excellent growth rate for a business to increase at. 20% is excellent to be sure. And so now that we looked at all of these characteristics of Roblox, I want to look at the valuation. And it's trading at a forward price to sales of 4.855 and an enterprise value of 22.69 billion. So if I look at the cash flow, it generated approximately 500 million in cash flow from operations in 2023. So the business total is selling at roughly 40, 44 times cash flow from operations in the trailing 12 months. And those cash flow from operations are increasing and users are increasing by 20%. Bookings is increasing by 20%. Cash flow is increasing by more than that. And it's got catalysts to boost revenue and cash flow and profitability even more, given that it's just now ramping up advertising. It's trying to bring in advertising so that it can monetize those non-depositing daily active users. So all things considered, I also think Roblox is an excellent investment. So I concur with Kathy Wood here, and I agree that Roblox is an excellent stock you can buy today. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.